Hello and welcome to a long, 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 long overdue pickup video. And I wish I was kidding, I got somewhere between 15 consoles and close to like two, 300 games. So I'm going to try to do this in multiple videos. Don't know how well it's going to work out. It's kind of hard to remember what I've gotten since I last done pick up a, a pickup video. But I am going to try to do these at least every Monday. So I'm trying to get back on track. But anyways, I'll start off with what I picked up. Well, the biggest thing, and by that I literally mean the biggest thing, is an original launch model Atari 2600 complete in box. It's in pretty good shape except for that right there. Other than that, it's in very, very good shape, and I'm really happy to have this in the collection. And, as you'll soon see, I got a lot of Atari stuff. Uh, one thing in... I'm guessing this is pretty rare. There's not many online. There's one online, actually, and it's not complete in its box. And I think this was new. When, oh, it's not now, but because I, I opened it and used it. But it, I think it was new. And that is the Atari 2600 Space Age Joystick. Um, a very comfortable controller. Uh, it's just really comfortable. And I can't recommend it enough. However, the scarcity of it might turn a lot of people off, but if you have one and you haven't used it, definitely try it. It's it's a really cool controller. I'm trying to decide what to do next. I guess I'll go with some of my box Atari 2600 games that I bought. That Pretty much that whole wall, except for like maybe 15 or 20 of them, the ones I already had. Or, I picked up. And a lot of them were just upgraded to box boxed games. So, there's that. But first up, I got Solaris which I've heard a lot of good things about. haven't plugged it into play yet, but it looks really cool. And there's the little artwork for it. And I don't remember if I mentioned this, but I got a new computer and a camera, so if it looks a little better than it normally does, that's why. Next up, I got Junior Pac-Man, which is the best Pac-Man on the 2600, in my opinion. It's, it's a really good version of it. I definitely played this one, and it's, it's a blast. Alright, next up we got Moon Patrol, which I haven't played. I, again, I've heard a lot of good things about it, but I just haven't got around to playing it yet. Next up we have Human Cannonball, which I've only played on the Plug and Play. I think it's on that. So I can't wait to play it on its original hardware. Then we have Canyon Bomber. Again, I, I think I played this one on the Plug and Play, I think. I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, this is the one where you're dropping bombs and knocking out the levels of breaks. Kind of like reverse breakout, I think. But yeah, it's pretty cool. Then I got one of my favorite games complete, and that is Wizards of War. This game is so good, and I love it, and I'm really happy to have it boxed. Same with these two. This is actually probably my favorite 2600 and ColecoVision game, and that is Venture. I got both variations of it got the ColecoVision one and the Atari Red Label version. Again, really happy to have both of these. Next up we got Kung Fu Master, which is an Activision game licensed by Data East, and the graphics are surprisingly good. Now I do believe that that is kind of an exaggeration, but it's not a huge one on how good it looks on there. <clears throat> Again, another one of my favorite games. And I, I get a lot of shit, but I actually prefer this over Battle... Wow, I forget the name of it. Battle Tank? Battle... Yeah, I think that's it. Or... Battle Zone. Battle Zone. Yeah. But it's Robot Tank Complete. I love this game, and my copy of the cartridge looked like it had been in a fire. And with soot all over it, and you couldn't really get it all up. So I'm really happy to not, not only upgrade to box, but a lot better cartridge. Next up we got Private Eye, which this game just looks insane. Um, I, I watched a video of it, haven't played it yet, but it just looks so crazy. Really happy to get that. Next up, one I have played and it's terrible. <laughs> Ghostbusters for the 2600. And uh, it's like the NES one, but with terrible graphics. So, I, I can't recommend this game. The box is a bit chewed. So, another terrible, terrible game is D 
Dish Aster, which is such a pain to pronounce. And basically, I ha I did play this one because it inter it not interested me. It caught my attention. And basically, you have to go around hitting the button to level out all the plates. And it's it's bad. I do not recommend it whatsoever. And the last three I got are U.S. games, uh, Squeezebox. I I popped it in to play it, and I could have sworn I played this before, but I, I don't have the cartridge anywhere, and I don't believe it came out on any other consoles, so that's confusing me. But anyways, Squeezebox. And then I got Egomania, which I haven't played. It looks like it might kind of be like Kaboom, maybe? Oh, I don't know. Looks kind of cool. And name this game and win ten thousand dollars, which I don't believe they ever did, because I've heard, I think everyone's heard about this game by now, but I don't believe they ever paid out for their game. I don't think there was a winner or anything. But I know a lot of people aren't here for the Atari stuff, so that's it. What might shock a lot of you is I finally bought a Nintendo DS, and. Just, I don't find it a very comfortable console at all, and I know a lot of people do, and that's fine. I'm not shitting on it, because some of the games I bought for it I really am enjoying, but it's just not my cup of tea. So I thought I would upgrade to the XL, which this is the Super Mario Bros. 25th Anniversary Edition, and again, it's just not comfortable. I'm, I'm probably going to end up getting a 2DS, because... It looks like it'll be the most comfortable console for me, and I just don't find 3D to be at all enticing. In fact, it gives me intense headaches. But, since we're on the topic of a, the DS, which I seem to have misplaced a game, I got a good amount. <clears throat> so, first up, I got Peggle Dual Shot, and I've, I've, I've always liked the Peggle games. They're not terrible. They're actually some of the only puzzle games I can play, and it is complete, so I'm really happy to get that. I got this game for one reason, and it's because in one of the chords, if you play it, it's like a demonic voice speaking. And it was it's a dirt cheap game too, so why not? Next up, and I don't know why I got this, because I'm not a fan of the series at all, and that is Mega Man Zero Collection. And this is the Game Boy Advance uh, Mega Man's, and again, I don't know why I bought it, but I did. Then I got Pokemon Black 2, or version 2, and I'm not digging it. I, I was hoping I could get into a DS Pokemon game, and I just don't think it's going to happen. Next up, we got Diamond. Again, I was trying to get into one, and this one is not doing it for me either, but I figure I'll give it a try later down the line and then a game I, I never heard of and it's actually kind of fun and that's From the Abyss it's it's hard to explain it's a grinder in every sense of the word you grind through enemies to level up and then you go to the boss fights and then there's little in between stages it's, it's quite the fun game actually which I, I don't like grinding RPGs so I was surprised I like this but it's pretty fun. Next up we got Dragon Ball Origins and this game is fantastic. I can't recommend it enough. It's so good. I love this game. And then another one I got is Suicoden and I cannot pronounce that word for the life of me. Three Chris? Tri I don't know. It's it's not bad. <laughs> the, vo the game's fun, don't get me wrong. But the voice acting in it is laughable. It's it's pretty funny. And then next up I got Dragon Quest IV Chapters of the Chosen. Again, a really, really cool remake. I love this. This is a great remake. I uh, can't recommend it enough. If you run across this, pick it up. It's kind of expensive, but still, just get it. It's fantastic. And then two games I'm pretty sure all of you predicted I would be getting when I finally got a DS. And that is The Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks, which I haven't played this one yet. It is complete, and I'll get to why I haven't played this one yet, and that is this one, the Phantom Hourglass, which is, I bought it card only, and then a friend gave me the case for it, so 
I need the manual now. And I'm enjoying it. I hate that you have to use the stylus to control Link. Whoever thought that was a good idea needs to be taken out and shot. It's a terrible idea. You do get used to it, and I hate to say that because a lot of people, when they hear that, they think, oh, it gets better. It doesn't. It's it. You just get used to it. Other than that, my only complaint is the timed dungeon. And it's not the fact that you have to re-go through all the same places. I actually find that fun, especially with all the the newer stuff you get, like the, when you get the boomerang, the upgraded sword. And it just makes those dungeons like, oh, we, I can get through here pretty fast and in a new way. But the time element kills it for me because I love to explore in Zelda games. And that prevents that. I'm still, I, I can still recommend this game. It's just buyer beware. And holy crap, I got a stack of stuff that's just falling everywhere. Again, not surprising, I got a PlayStation Vita, which I'm... This thing is awesome. I wish Sony would do more with it in terms of marketing because I honestly think this thing would give the 3DS a run for its money. However, it's as it stands, it's buried, and I don't think Sony's going to do much with it, sadly. But anyways, on to the games. I got my only loose cart game so far, Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Not a huge fighting game fan, but this is pretty fun. And then I got Mortal Kombat which I'm <sighs> Vita games are hard to find I pretty much bought this so I could have a fighting game and then I found this one and actually liked it I don't care for Mortal Kombat pretty much it's it's not my favorite fighting game by any means but I have it and then I have Need for Speed Most Wanted I've probably put maybe 30 minutes into it it's it's a racing game I'm not a racing game fan but it's a racing game, so if you like that, you'll probably like that one. And then Luminous Electronic Symphony, which is, again, a puzzle. I don't care for puzzle games, but this one is pretty good. I've probably clocked in five hours on this, and it just keeps getting harder and harder. It's kind of like Tetris, but it's, it's pretty good. I love it. Next one is Call of Duty Black Ops Declassified. And I pretty much bought this to see how first-person shooters would play on the Vita. And they don't do terrible, uh, I think. And it, again, this might be this game, but it just seems hard to aim accurately. Um, and the reason I got this is because I'm kind of wanting to get Borderlands 2 for the Vita. Simply because I, I get a lot of shit for this. I didn't care for the first one all that much. I tried it with multiple friends and single player and I just could not get into the game. But I figured I'd give two a shot and that seems like the best place to do it. But anyways, next up I got Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation, which is a very fun game, very buggy even with the patch. So I recommend getting this on I think I think it's on both 360 and PS3. But I recommend picking it up that way simply for the fact that this version seems buggy, and I don't. I didn't. I say that, but I don't know if they fixed it on the other consoles. I assume they have. All right. Next up, I guess we'll go with my current gen stuff. Picked up two PS3 games. I got Uncharted 3, and I pretty much bought this because I've beaten the first two, and I figured it was time to give this one a shot. And much like two, I just I'm finding it very very hard to get into this game. I I loved the first one, and that's what a lot of people find weird. I really loved the first one. It had a lot of flaws in it, but I loved it. Then 2 came out, and it took me like six months to beat that game. And this one I've probably put in... I'm not sure. I'm to the part where you're looking at the constellations to find something, if that makes any sense. But I just I can't get into it. I will finish it eventually. In a game that got a lot of crap, but I'm actually loving a lot, and that is Beyond Two Souls. I uh, beat it already. Uh, it's a it's a very cool little game. It, game. It's a David Cage game, so it's pretty much a movie, but it's really, really, uh, it's well done. Some people didn't like the fact that it jumped back and forth in the timeline, but anyone with half a brain can follow it, so I love it. Alright, next up we got some 360 games. 
Uh, first up, I got Ultimate Rapture Edition Bioshock, which comes with 1 and 2 and all the DLC. And I already have the first two and have beaten them, but I haven't bought the DLC for them. And it comes with stickers for Infinite, which are pretty cool. And it was like 14 bucks, so I think the DLC put together is more than more than 14 online. I could be mistaken, so it's a deal right there. And then I got Assassin's Creed 3 on recommendation. Haven't played much of it. It didn't look interesting. However, the little bit of it I did play, it was enjoyable. So the story is flat out stupid by now, though. So if you're going in this for a good story, you're in the wrong game. But there's that. Then next up, I got Kingdoms of Amulet Reckoning, which is... It's hard to explain. It kind of plays like Fable with the look of World of Warcraft. But also like Fable. It's it's weird. It's hard to explain. It's a very good game. It's it's a sad thing that big, big huge games shut down. And this will most likely be the last Kingdoms of Amular game we'll ever see. The last and only one. Because it, it, it showed a lot of potential. And it's sad that they're gone. Alright, so getting on to my two Intellivision pickups, which are nothing spectacular, but I got Pinball and Slam Dunk Super Pro Basketball, which the Intellivision dude swears is a good game. Haven't played it yet. And I do like older basketball games. Pre-NES basketball games I tend to like for whatever reason. But anyways, now time for the cartridge-based games, the Nintendo stuff. Yes, I actually bought some box Nintendo stuff. First up is strictly for the box art and how ridiculous it is. I got California Games. I just I've always thought that box art was ridiculous, and I kind of want to get the 2600 one complete. But anyways, there's that. It looks ridiculous. Next one up is Skate or Die, which again I don't think is a good game. I haven't really played it ever. I'll definitely give it a shot though, but anyways, yeah, just it, the cover art looked funny, so I bought it. And I got a box upgrade, or, yeah, I box upgraded from a cartridge only to a box, and this has the manual, the map, and everything in it, and that is Final Fantasy, which is just really cool. I love this game so much, and so happy to finally have it complete. Um, another version of the first Final Fantasy I cannot recommend enough is the PSP remake which is just fantastic but again that's pretty cool next up I got an awesome Super Nintendo game complete and that is Breath of Fire which is really fun I stayed up uh, a few nights ago till like 4 in the morning playing it and it's it's a really good game and I cannot believe I put this game off for so long but anyways there's Breath of Fire and it is almost complete it's got the manual but it does not help have the map, however, but there's that. And another box upgrade. Or I'll show that one in a minute. I'll show you my only loose cartridge in 64 game I got first. And that is Midway's Greatest Arcade Hits Volume 1. And I pretty much bought this for Root Beer Tapper. Because Tapper is such a fun game. And it's probably my most wanted real life arcade cabinet. I'd love to get the Budweiser Tapper arcade game. But I know that game is ridiculously expensive. I mean, all arcades are, but that one in particular. But anyways, on to my last one for this video, I think. Let me double check. Nope. One more, sorry. I got Excite Bite for the NES. I uh, had it a long time ago, and it got stolen, so I was happy to get it again. Now on to my last game. The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time Complete in Box is very cool. So happy to get this upgraded to a complete and box game. Now I have all but one of my favorite uh, Zelda games complete, the other one being Minish Cap. I do not have that complete and it's kind of an expensive one to get complete. But anyways, was anyone else shocked that this took kind of a price drop lately? Eh, maybe it's an increase, but I always thought this was like 60 bucks and now it seems to be going for 45, 50 tops. But anyways, that's that, and 
those are my pickups so far and I guess I'll just show this as a little bonus I got Phantom, Hour, uh, Phantom Hourglass DS case woohoo anyways that's my pickups and I'll do another I'll try to do another one next Monday but for now thanks for watching